Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Creel, uh, one of the associate directors for admission here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. I am happy to be joined today by our director for admission, Ms. Angela Marquez, and we'll be going over everything that you need to know with financial aid regarding the FAFSA, TAP, Pell, how to fill out your FAFSA, and also other questions that you may have regarding financial aid, specifically here at the College of Mount St. Vincent. I'll introduce Angela and then we'll get right into it. If you're watching on Instagram Live or on YouTube, feel free to drop any questions that you may have and we'll get back to you through Instagram DM or reply to your comment on YouTube. So Angela, you can introduce yourself and also to Angela, happy birthday today. Thank you, Drew. Hi, everyone. My name is Angela Marquez, and I am the Director for Financial Aid here at the College of Mount St. Vincent, and as we like to call it, CMSV. And as we all like to say, welcome to the Mount. And as our president also likes to say, the right place on the river, is it? Am I saying it right? Yeah, all I got good. it. Oh, well, good. Okay. So again, guys, welcome to our first financial aid workshop for the night. Um, this will be the first out of many. I believe our next one is November 7th and Drew will fill you in later on after the presentation on what we're going to discuss in this one. But today, our presentation tonight is to help you know and understand what FAFSA is and what you need to know in order to get your college career started. I know this may not be the most interesting presentation, but I guarantee you guys is the most informative one you will ever receive. So with more further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'll try to make this quick, easy and painless, okay? So <laughs> let's move on. All right, so the topics that we have today on our presentation is what is financial aid, the cost of attendance, uh, what is the federal FAFSA application, Expect a family contribution, which are mainly known as EFC, financial need, verification, special circumstance. Um, I will go through these topics and I will go into more into debt as we go through it, but I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next slide. All right. What is financial aid? Everyone asks us the same question. What is financial aid? Financial aid is to help you and your families pay for your education, pay for college. So I like to tell people, hey, financial aid is your friend. Why do I say financial aid is your friend? Because it helps you pay college. This is what helps you receive scholarships, loans, grants. So again, think of financial aid as FAFSA, free application, friend, FAFSA. Just look at it as someone who's going to help you throughout your whole college career. All right, moving forward, guys. Here we go. So the types of different financial aid. So we have need-based, merit, grant aids, self-help. What does that mean? Need-based means if you fill out your FAFSA application, you could receive need-based need as Pell and TAP. Merit. Merit means scholarships. If you apply, let's say, to CMSV and you fill out your FAFSA application and you go through the admissions process, they look at your admissions process. They look at, sorry, they look at your admissions application and you could receive a merit scholarship. For gifting aid, gifting aid comes also from filling out your FAFSA application and self-help comes from filling out your FAFSA application and accepting your loans. So these are the all different uh, four different types of components that you're looking into when you're doing your FAFSA application. Another key component is that you could work while you're in school and that's called work study. I know many of you have heard of work study. You can make money while you're on campus. That's what it is. There is a small question on the FAFSA application. If you answer yes, then you can work on campus and you can make up to $15 an hour, depending where you land the job. All right, cost of attendance. What is cost of attendance? When you attend many of these open houses, you're gonna hear the term cost of attendance. Just for your information, cost of attendance is tuition and fees, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, and miscellaneous personal expenses. So that is what makes the cost of attendance and what makes the budget cost for a student. Okay, the FAFSA. I know when you hear FAFSA, it sounds like such a scary application, but honestly, I look at it, it's my friend is the most friendliest application that I'm ever gonna come across because it's going to help me get free money for college. So when you hear FAFSA, you hear free money, right? It's not all free, right? You're going to have to look into investing in yourself and taking out loans, but these are the components as you could do FAFSA. FAFSA application, you could download the app on your iPhone or your Android. Uh, the FAFSA application is available as of October 1st, which was this weekend, and it opened up for 23-24. Uh, so that's for you high school seniors right now that are looking into attending college for the next 22-23 uh, academic year. So 
moving forward. Here we go. Uh, what can you receive when you fill out the FAFSA application? You can receive Pell up to 6,895 and Pell is free money. Free money by filling out your FAFSA application that you do not have to pay back. You also could receive federal direct loans. Federal direct loans are loans that are given to you without credit check, but they're given to you in order to help you finance your education. I like to call these loans investments in yourself. So taking money out to borrow to pay your education now, and then you'll pay it back once you have a career. There's nothing wrong with that. It helps you pay your college way. Work study. Again, you could work while you're in school. Also, by applying for the FAFSA application, it allows you and your parents to finance your education by giving your parents the opportunity to apply for a Parent PLUS loan. This is for the parents that, you know, hey, our parents work hard. They may not have the money right now to be able to pay for your college education, but at least with the FAFSA application, they could apply for a Parent PLUS loan. They could receive the money now and pay it back after your four years of you finish your bachelor's degree. So again, it helps you and it helps your parents, so it helps you as a family. Okay, before you apply for your FAFSA, there are a couple of key components that you do need in order for you to receive the FAFSA application and for your school to receive it. But in order for you to start this out, you need to collect the 2021 tax returns from your parents and their W-2. Also, if they have any bank statements or investments, you need that. And you also need a social security card available for you and your parents. Once you have all of these components, you're able to create an FSA ID, which is basically a login in order to fill in the FAFSA application. You will have to create an FSA ID for you and your parent. Okay, the Federal Student Aid FSA ID. So exactly. So you have to create an FSA ID for you and you have to create an FSA ID for your parent. It's a very important that you use two different emails. When you're using the same email, it won't allow you to create the FSA ID because it's looking for an email confirmation in order to confirm that the identity belongs to that person. So when creating an FSA ID, you go on to studentaid.gov slash FSA ID, and you start creating your ID with your date of birth, name, social security, and email. The same situation goes for the TAP application, which is the state federal, uh, the state grant that allows you to receive up to $5,665 free as well. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you are creating an FSA ID. So this is going to be a walkthrough of what you're going to look at when you're creating the FSA ID. Again, it's just a fast walkthrough. It's very self-explanatory, but at least we wanted you to get a feel of what it's going to look like. We could also share this presentation with you if you want to be able to reference it back when you are creating the FSA ID. So here you're going to click where it says create account. Then once you get to this page, you're going to say, you're going to click where it says get started. Once you go here, this is where all of your personal information goes as far as social security, date of birth, name match, all of the information that is required of you in order to proceed to the next step. Same situation here, you have to create a username, an email and password. Again, make sure that you're creating a password that you're going to remember because this, um, this username, you will have to continue with using it for the next four years. So it's important that you create a password and a username that you're going to remember. Okay, you could provide contact information as far as your address and phone number. Then you have to select the communication preference. If you would like to receive it by mail, you can select that option. If you run or receive it by a text message, you can select that option. Or if your preferred language is English or Spanish. Um, I say since today, everyone is very um, tech savvy and cell phone friendly the best selection would be to use messaging because this way you have it at hand and you are able to know when something is needed of you from the FAFSA application. Okay, and this is just creating an FSA ID. It is case sensitive, so make sure that if you are selecting these challenge questions that you're selecting it and that you're using the same lowercase or uppercase when you're creating a password. Okay, verifying your contact information. So we already did the biggest part, which is creating the FSA ID. But now, which is a piece that many people forget, is verifying their information. You have to verify your cell phone number and you have to verify your email address. If you do not verify any of these two, then your FSA ID would not ever work. So it's very important you do these two, account, um, these two verifications. Okay, guys? Next. Here we go. 
So typically you could create an SSA ID, but it does take up to three business days for the Social Security Administration to review and verify your identity. So what does that mean? That means they want to actually verify that you are who you are. So they want to verify that the name on your social security is exactly as you entered on your FSA ID and that your social security matches to your date of birth and that your personal information matches to your address as well. So again, it takes about three business days just to verify who you are. But the good news is you can still fill out the FAFSA application even if it hasn't been verified yet. Okay, so here. Now that you have completed and created your FSA ID, you could fill out the FAFSA application. You could be a US citizen or a non-citizen and you could go ahead and fill out this application. And the same thing for your parents. They don't have to be a citizen of the US in order to use their information on the FAFSA application. Okay, so this is what it looks like after you created your FSA ID. Now you're ready to complete your FAFSA application. So for you, this is new. So you're gonna click where it says start here. You are a new user. Then you're gonna tell them who you are. If you have a counselor helping you, that's perfectly fine, but they will count as um, I am a preparer helping a student fill out his or her FAST application. If you are the student, you select I am the student. And if you are the parent, you select I am the parent. It gives you three options. You select who you are and who's doing the application for you. Okay, so here it is. If you're going to start uh, your college career, let's say July 1st of 2023, then the FAFSA application that you're filling out that's available right now as of October 1st is the 2324. Please ignore our little error situation here. We couldn't update the 22 to 23, but it should be 22 to, it should be 23 to 24. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is what it looks like. When you're creating a safe key, this is the first page that you come across after you're logging in to filling out your FAST application. It's very important you remember the safe key because it doesn't let you in if you don't remember the safe key. So write it down in your notepad, create a folder with all your passwords, and make sure that you have this key component moving forward because you will need it for the next four years. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is after the first uh, safe key. And it says, how can I get to help you complete your FAFSA? So it does provide you help. You just have to read the information and click on it. And it will get you to the point where you finalize the FAFSA application and you're completely done. Okay. So the FAFSA, student information, same thing. You need your FSA ID. You need to verify your social security. You need to verify your date of birth. You need to make sure that you verify the information that's being sent to you from the federal government as far as your email and your phone number. And then also the same thing for the TAP application. You have to create a user. You have to verify your ID. You have to verify if you're a citizen. And for males, it's very important at the moment that you actually do indicate if you are uh, registered for select services, which is at the bottom. If you are a male who's under the age of 18 to 25, you do have to fill this out and either comply with it or not. Okay, this is what it's looked like. Okay, so for most of you students, if you are a high school, let's say in spring, no, sorry. For this year, you are going to graduate as a senior from high school and you're receiving a high school diploma, then you're selecting high school diploma. If you receive the GED, you're selecting a GED. If you did a certification of any other type at homeschooling, then you're selecting that. The next question should always be your first bachelor's. And the next question after that, which is what will your college grade level be when you're continuing? And it should be never attended. If you have attended in the past, fine. But if most of you are seniors in high school, then it should be never attended college before. And then for the question for work study, which I show right here at the bottom, it says, are you interested in being, a, being considered for work study? It's either yes, no, and don't know. Um, you could always say yes. And if you decide not to do work study while you're in school, you don't have to, but at least you have the option that will offer it to you and you're able to use it whenever you have the ability to start working and figure out your schedule. Okay, student information, same thing. This continues to be uh, providing information as far as your driver's license, if you have one, if you're a foster kid, if you were adopted, if you're living with um, a step parent, if you have a higher level of education, besides uh, you know, high school or, or maybe you have an associate and you're going back to college, 
So again, it's just providing all the information that you can in order to make sure that you're giving them all the necessary, all the necessary information that they need. There we go. All right, another important part. So if you are coming to our school, which we hope you are, for the College of Mount St. Vincent, you have to indicate the school code. Our school code is 002703. If you are selecting the College of Mount St. Vincent, you can search our name or you can add our school code 002703. The good thing about this application is that you could add up to 10 schools. I don't know if you see it right here at the very far right. It says select up to 10 schools. So you could do this application one time and select up to 10 colleges that you're thinking of going to, that you're interested in, but you're not sure. This way they receive your financial information, they receive your FAFSA application, and you just have to apply for it once and add 10 schools. So this is a good component. Also, you could Google any other school that you're interested in and say, what is the school code for Lehman College to say? And you could just type it in. The same thing, what is the school code for College of Mount St. Vincent? And they'll pop up and you indicate this number right here on the FAFSA application, and then you can move forward. Okay, this is just the same thing. You have to select if you are dependent on, not dependent, most of you because you live with your parents and you're under the age of 18, you are a dependent student. So this is where you will select the answers. Okay, dependent students, just to make sure that you understand what it is. If you are a dependent student, you live with your parents, your parents support you and you are in your um, parents' taxes. If you have parents that are divorced and you are in a situation of where you live 50, 50% with them, we will ask you, who do you live 51% more with? And that is the parents' informa financial information that you could use on the FAFSA application. Okay, so this is just a little overview of who's my parents and when I fill out the FAFSA. Just a little overview of what it could look like and how it looks like. This is just little things that we do just to kind of pinpoint which way it's gonna work out when it comes to the financial aid. Okay, now, unfortunately, your parents have to go through the same step of creating an FSA ID, but they do it once and it's good for every kid that they decide that for every kid that they have and that attend college and, you know, it, it sticks with them. So the same thing, they have to create an FSA ID they have to provide the information. <clears throat> now, another important key component is financial information. When your parents fill out their 2021 taxes, they're able to use a data retrieval tool. What is a data retrieval tool? The data retrieval tool is just basically a fancy word for linking your parents' tax information to the FAFSA application. This is the easiest way that you could possibly do your parents' information. This way you're not typing it in. This way you're not making a typo. You're just using the linkage and it links the parents' information and that's it. One click and it'll get you there. So it's not as hard as it sounds. It's very self-explanatory. Okay, data retrieval. Again, if your parent is eligible for the data retrieval, this is what it'll look like. And then all you have to do is process to the IRS and their information links. Okay, this is additional information. If your family or parents are business owners, we will ask you additional information as far as are they paying extra set of taxes? If your parents are divorced, are they receiving child support? Um, are your parents on food stamps or anything like that? Everyone's situation is different. So depending on the previous questions that you answer is that different questions will populate for you. Okay, now submitting your FAFSA application. When you get to the point of submitting your FAFSA application, this is where many of our students make the mistake that they sign the student side, but they don't sign the, uh, the parent side. So remember, you created two FSA IDs. So one for you and one for mom or dad. So you have to sign it and it says signed with FSA ID. And if you look on the side, it says still need to provide parent signature. It's very important that you provide your parent signature as well, because then this will create a rejected FAFSA and then that would not allow you to receive an award letter. So again, important that both student and parent sign the FAFSA application. Okay, so again, this is what it looks like after you sign, sign the FAFSA, who's the parent, either mom or dad, you could make an FSA ID either for mom and dad, you can make it for both in case you wanna use either or. 
Okay. Now, this is the important page. This is the FAFSA confirmation. Once you have completed your FAFSA and both parents sign, this is the FAFSA confirmation that you receive. And as you can see here, what we're looking for is the bottom part where it says Pell estimated and direct loan estimated. We're also looking for the EFC. I think, I don't know if you guys can see it there because I can't because I have Drew here on my side. Hold on. There we go. So sorry about that. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is for the information that we're looking for. We're looking for the estimated Pell and the estimated direct loan and then the estimated family contribution, which is the EFC, which is all the way at the bottom where it says eligibility information. This number is what helps you determine what you're going to receive from the school that you go to. And that could be on need base, that could be on merit, um, I'm sorry, that could be on need base, and that could be based on Pell and TAP base, okay? Again, so once you finish, it's important to receive this confirmation. And also, I don't know if you see where my arrow is pointing, it says start your state application. The state application means this is where you could receive TAP, which means additional free money, guys. You could receive up to 5665 every year if you fill out your state um, TAP application. And it's right here. You could go right off of the confirmation of the FAST application. Okay. Again, this is just for you to understand how the EFC contribution works and what it looks like. Okay. And then what is the financial need? So the way that it works is, remember, we spoke earlier about cost of attendance, the EFC, which is the family contribution, and then it equals the financial need. This is where the school knows how much they need to offer you and how much your family needs in order to attend, let's say, CMSV. Okay. The FAFSA verification. So once the FAFSA is submitted, we're going to verify your information. If you're selected for verification, the school will contact you and ask you for additional information, which that means we need you to fill out paperwork and we need you to supply your parents' 2021 taxes. Okay, the next steps. So, okay, now you submitted your FAFSA application. Admissions has reviewed your application. Uh, now we're going to look at your, at your FAFSA and give you an award letter and see what you qualify for as far as gifting aid, which is scholarships and grants that you don't have to pay back and self-help, which is loans, which is investing in yourself, and work study that you could work while you're in school. Okay, special circumstance. For many parents due to COVID, there is a special circumstance where they didn't make the same dollar amount that they made the year before. If that is the situation that your parent has at the moment, then you could reach out to the school and you could let them know that, hey, although my mom's taxes say for 2021, I'm just putting a number out there that she made 100,000. In reality, for this year, she only made 55. And unfortunately, we can't afford it. And that's not real information. So then once you reach out to the financial aid office, then we'll provide you with a special circumstance information paperwork. You'll send it back. And then we could do a special circumstance to modify the dollar amount, which means we'll use what the current income is versus what uh, the federal um, FAFSA application is for asking for. So again, and that could work for anyone. If your parents were unemployed, workers' comp, lost their job, had a change in income, death in the family, anything, the financial aid office is here to help you and we can help you proceed through this process. Okay, so the financial aid future. What is the financial aid future? You will complete a FAFSA application every year. So this is something that you have to do every October 1st. Once you start your college career, you'll get into the rhythm of knowing, hey, I got to complete my FAFSA because my scholarships won't come in or my Pell and TAP will come in. So just know that you have to do this every year. Okay. Oh, yeah. I did it a little painless, right? So questions, guys. Um, if you guys want to reach us for any reason, I have me and my team who are there to help you with any questions that you might have. If you and your family want to come in just because you have a question and you're not sure how to do it or how to go about it, please email us or call us and we'll be more than happy to help you and your family understand the process and fill out the FAST application. I think we're done, Drew. Perfect. Thank you so much, Angela. That was smooth. 55 minutes right on the dot. Perfectly okay. done.
<laughs> and again, all the information is right on the screen. So financial.aid at mountstvincent.edu to reach out with any questions. Along with that, if you have your admission counselor's information, you can reach out to any one of us and we could definitely direct your question to financial aid and kind of filter it through to get you a response. And remember the FAFSA application is open as of Saturday, October 1st. So you can get on there, create your FSA ID along with your parents' FSA ID and get started on that FAFSA application. If you know of any other students or friends or family that may be interested in learning more about how to do their FAFSA, please let them know. We have two more financial aid workshops on November 7th at 6.30 p.m and December 7th at 6.30 p.m. So those are two dates to be aware of. And as always, we're gonna stay up to date on Instagram, make sure that we have it on Instagram Live, on YouTube, and then also we're gonna record this and send it out to all of our students. So anytime you guys have a question, we're here to help. So Angela, thank you again so, so much. Really appreciate it. And also happy birthday to you again. Cheers. Thank, thank you, you so guys. much. Thank, thank you, you guys. everyone for watching.